So with the release of Studio One version 5.5, which is the most recent release as of the time that I'm doing this video, we got a really nice update with respect to scenes in that they now have the ability to recall automation. So I'm gonna be honest, this was the main reason that I didn't embrace using scenes when it comes to mixing. So this is something that we can almost kind of see as basically kind of like having a save as within our actual song. So let's say that we have this mix over here and I wanted to set this up as like uh, my, my basic mix that I have. So I can add a scene and I can choose which parameters that I want the scenes um, to recall. So let's say that I choose everything, all right? I wanna choose all of these options over here and this is what I want to recall in terms of the scenes. Now, all I have to do is add a scene and then I can call this, for example, basic mix. So this now becomes my starting point. Now, if I make any changes to this and I was to go back to my basic mix, notice that it recalls everything. And this would be even more evident if we had different things like, for example, plugins and, and pan level changes and things like that. But let's say that I make some changes and I want to be able to update this because I want this these changes that I made over here, I want these now to be my new basic mix scene. In that case, we can right click and we have the ability to update scene. Now this scene is selected right now and currently it's in blue because I've selected it. But if I was to click off, you'll see that this is selected. So now I wanna make some changes to this. Let's just adjust maybe the panning and some levels. Now let's say this becomes um, my next mix. So this could be, for example, I can add a new scene and I can call this like updated mix. So now I have my basic mix and then I have my updated mix. Now also there are shortcuts available to go to the previous and next scene. So we can go to studio one keyboard shortcuts. Let's type in scene. I know I have these by default. What do we have? Okay, so we have next scene and previous scene. So I've got these mapped out to this key command and then we can recall very specific scenes. So if you want to have keyboard shortcuts, to be able to access this so you don't have to double click them, this is something that we can do. But even if I take a look at this now and we use these shortcuts, I can't remember if I mapped these out or if these were included, um, I can go to my previous mix and I can go to my updated mix. So it's very easy for me to be able to see which one is being loaded based upon where I have uh, the blue icon that's sitting here. Now, this is pretty cool because we can have multiple mixes from within one song. I don't have to do a save as, I don't even have to do versions. The first thing that comes to mind with the way that I work is I'm always printing through my external hardware. And in that case, I have a particular workflow that I like to use where I record onto layers. And for those cases, I will use a save as function. Now, in terms of how that would impact my work, and I'll, I'll include a link to that in an info card up above or there or wherever it is. Um, but I was just thinking to myself, is this something that could replace it? And I suppose it is. If I was continuously bringing in the new mix and I brought them into different tracks and I hid the visibility of other tracks when I wanted to update the mix, then it is something I could use and I could still toggle between them. I'm not sure if I'm ready to leave my workflow of being able to choose my different versions from the different layers yet, but that's something I guess that will be determined. Now, these are cool in terms of options when we're mixing, but there's some other options that we have in terms of how we can use scenes. So if you just wanted to have something that was linked, for example, to visibility, let's actually right click here and I'm going to remove this scene. And also this one, let's double click to bring ourselves back to the basic mix, but then let's remove this scene as well. So we don't just have to be tied to using all of the visibility options. That's one thing I wanna point out. If you wanted only, for example, volume or just visibility, then these are things you could do uh, in terms of deselecting some of these preferences. But one situation that I find myself running into a lot, especially when I'm tracking, and especially if I'm creating a custom Q mix for an artist, is a lot of the times when you're running a record pass on something, let's say you're working with a dense arrangement, Sometimes what an artist will ask for uh, is they will say, okay, can you kill the, for example, the, the these background elements, these background vocals, and can you kill this, or can you bring all of those down, or can you bring the click down, or can you bring the click up? So they have a very specific cue mix. 
And I would usually create a custom cue mix for this because I don't want to disrupt my main mix, which I'm continuously balancing as I go. So for these situations, what you end up with is a custom cue mix that's being created only for the purpose of recording. They may take a couple different runs or might they might be in a takes to layers workflow, but then the minute that's done, and let's say the minute you comp something together, they're immediately ready to hear a playback. In most cases, when we do a playback, at that point, it's a good idea for them to hear the main mix, especially if I'm balancing and leveling things as I go. I want to give them the intent or the purpose of the whole entire production. So with scenes, if we enable the QMix option and let's enable our large console, let's take a look at what's happening with this particular QMix. So I am going to just unlink this and I'm going to make some changes to this QMix. Okay. So right now, and this is going to be just doing this by eye, I'm going to change some things with the panning. And the idea here is that I just want a QMix that's different. So let's say that this represents the QMix that we are tracking with. Also note that I have a way that I'm recording basically the main mix that we're listening to in addition to being able to record the cue mix. So I'm doing that routing because I've got things set up in my audio device controls to be able to do that. So let me hide this for a moment. I'm going to open up my outputs and let's go to my SPDIF, which I believe is QA and let's enable our click track and I'm going to bring the level down a little bit. So essentially we're just looking to have a different mix. Now I want to make sure my solo mode is accurate. So I'm going to disable solo through listen bus. So this is just kind of regular behavior. So this is the mix that we're listening to in terms of the main mix that's on the faders. Now what the artist would be listening to while they're recording is an alternate mix. It's this mix. So it's completely different. Okay. Maybe we'll bring down these drums. So let's just say for all intents and purposes that that's the mix that they need to listen to in order to be able to um, perform. What I could do is I could basically create a scene which is just recalling the cue mix. Now, in the case where I only wanted it to work for a specific cue mix, I could choose a certain amount of channels and then choose the selected channels only option. But I honestly find that if I forget which channels were selected, that it doesn't work as intended. So let's just say I'm going to leave everything set as is, but I only want this to recall a cue mix. So I'm going to set up a scene basically that has the cue mix activated and let's call this um, recording. Okay. So this will be for my recording and this, the artist has a custom mix. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of these channels and I am going to basically re lock everything to the main mix. So now I'm going to create a new mix and this is going to be called playback. We'll call this playback and we will click OK. So now I haven't actually tried this, but this should work in theory. If the artist is recording, then it's just a matter of me switching to the recording cue mix. So if I push play and we listen to the artist's mix, okay, the artist is recording. They're happy, maybe they do multiple passes, maybe you have to do punch-ins, whatever the case might be. But then the minute you're ready to do a playback and they want to hear it in context, keep in mind, I might be mixing everything on the main mix and I get it leveled off nice. Then we'll just hop into the playback mix. And now the playback mix will be the same as the main mix. So here's the main mix. And here's our playback mix. And then if the artist says, okay, hold on, I messed up there. Can we go back and punch in in that point? I say, sure. I go back to my recording mix and then I can instantly just run a record and do a punch in and then we can run over that one section. So I think this is actually really, really useful. And this is something that I have had the need for, for a lot of times before when I'm doing tracking sessions in terms of if I don't want to disrupt my main mix to create a completely alternate cue mix just for the sake of recording something where they have to really lock in with a specific group of elements or something. This I think is a really useful feature and I hadn't seen it covered in this context. So I wanted to do a video about that. Anyways, that's my thoughts on the new 5.5 scenes update. The automation stuff is great because we can automate now. And if we have a different mix with automation, probably should have shown that, but there's lots of other videos that do show that we can recall that automation between mixes. And then this option here, Q mixes. If ever you're in the situation where you need to do this type of thing, give this a shot. Anyways, that's all the time I have available for today. I hope you enjoyed this content and I will catch you in the next video. Cheers.